Let's take a look at Thrill to the Darkener, the first one. With this dude, no one must be close to him. Keep always ranged and a nice distance from him, so no melee. Make sure everyone has a target of target enabled, because what he does is target someone and then chases that person around a bit, then switches to another person, and so on until he's dead. When he targets you, kite him around the room, making sure he never catches up with you while everyone DPS him down while he's being kited. This is the kite path you should take him on, with a raid standing here in the middle, so everyone can nuke him without having to chase behind him or anything, because you can just rotate around to nuke him as he's kited. That address the duck enough. You won't take aggro off the person he's looking at, so just nuke away as hard as you can until you get him down. Let's see the actual battle so you can see what I mean. Notice how deadly boss mods had put a skull over the head the one he's following. Forgive me, my prince. I have failed. Lord Sanguina. Tank Lord Sanguina here. This is important because he must die here because of what happens in the later phase when he resurrects. Use Fear Ward on the tank if you have it, and cast a stand max range to minimize the AoE fearing he will do to everyone. Grand Astromancer Capineran Grand Astromancer Capineran Use a nice warlock to take this mini boss with. So use misdirect shot and don't DPS until the warlock has this ad positioned at the back of the room. As again, this is where this ad must die. As you can see here, the warlock is using the fabulous drain tanking technique to tank this mob at the back of where she needs to be, and we DPS her here. While you're killing this boss, don't do any melee and all casters stand the max range possible you can from her. Also, everyone must spread out and not be close to each other. This is not! Master Engineer Telekikus. Now, the last and final act. Make sure just before Grand Astromancer Kapaniran dies, that the tank and his healer are already in position to pick up this ad immediately. Again, don't DPS until it's in position where it must die. You can see here where it needs to be killed. Off to the side, on the opposite side of where we killed Lord Sanguina. Just tank and spank him down, and that the tank and his healer are already in position to pick up this ad immediately. Again, don't DPS until it's in position where it must die. You can see here where it needs to be killed. Off to the side, on the opposite side of where we killed Lord Sanguina. Just tank and spank him down. And melee, don't stand too close to the MT, because this dude throws bombs at him. One thing to be careful of here though, is that if the tank gets the remote control toy debuff, or any of the weapon tanks do, Stop DPS until it passes. They can use free action potion on the last 30 seconds of this debuff if they want. More perils await. Oh, as soon as the master engineer dies, phase 2 pops. Okay, phase 2. Now things get interesting. You're on a timer now, so be quick. You have a number of options here. You can single target or AoE down the weapons. AoEing them is best in my opinion. So I'm going to show you that way. As you see, I have many weapons in my arsenal. So, the last mini boss dies. And then the tanks all tank the different weapons. So I have a tank on the sword plus shield, another on the mace, another on daggers and staff, another on the axe, and have a hunter tank the bow. The tank should go group everything up for AoEing except for the axe and bow. Okay, let's look at that in a little more detail. See here? How our tanking druid takes the axe around the back of the boss, so that when it spins it can't hit anybody. As he does this, all the warlocks throw a curse of doom onto it, as they all run over with all the other casters to here, to kill the bow.
all the casters are killing the bow as fast as they can, while the axe is tanked over here nice and safely. Meanwhile, all the melee are on the other weapons. As soon as the bow is dead, all the casters switch over to AoEing the rest of the weapons. And the tank on the axe makes sure the axe is positioned so that it gets AoE too. But being careful not to be too close as to let it hit anybody else but him. Now, as weapons die, something very important needs to happen. Everyone needs to loot and use the legendary weapons that they need for the next phases of this battle. And they have to do it fast as the weapons despawn quickly after they've died. So, as soon as the Nezotran longbow dies, the hunters need to loot and use it. All the rogue and DPS warriors loot the infinity blades and the warp slicers to dual wield them. Don't bother with the axe, just leave it and unloot it. All tanking warriors loot the sword and the shield, and all casters loot the staff. All healers loot the mace, the cosmic infuser. Phase 3 is the same as Phase 1 pretty much, but instead of having to kill the mini bosses one by one, you have them all at the same time. Normally that would be a nightmare, but because you have the legendary weapons and their special abilities, you can do this phase no problemo. Phase 3. This phase will pop 2 minutes after Phase 2 popped. 